Affinity Designer 2.3 has now a wonderful new feature, the Spiral Tool. So if you haven't downloaded it, please download it. I've done a video already on Affinity Photo 2.3. That also has a Spiral Tool. So some things in that will be also covered in this, but there's a few additional features that Designer has that Photo doesn't. So first thing to do, go over here and check for updates. So check for updates. Then if you still haven't found it in your tool panel, what you need to do is go to view and go down to customize tools. So customize tools, that'll bring up all the tools you've got available. And then you can drag that into this tools panel. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go over here. So here's the spiral tool, right down the bottom. Select the spiral tool and then apply. Now initial one is gonna be a very basic one. So you've got here, you've got no fill and you've got a stroke. Now the fill doesn't particularly work well with the spiral tool, it's a stroke based design. But the one thing about this with designer is you can expand the stroke so you can actually end up with a fill later. So what you need to do, just set the size, let's just set a width and you can set it to anything. You've also got options here for dashed and obviously solid. You can also change the color of course. You can create multiple designs with multiple different colors. Also, you've got options here. You can apply brush strokes. So let's just go here to window and brushes, any brush. So any brush can be added to your spiral. So you can create some really great looking spirals. You can also modify the pressure. So you just go down here, we've got the, the solid and just click here and just change the pressure. And as you do that, you'll notice what happens. You get a very thinning as well as slightly thicker in the spiral there. You can also, if you want, add a curved, barbed, triangle, all kinds of arrows can be added to your spiral, either end. If you're using the move tool with the spiral, you'll notice along here, the control bar, you've got lots of different options. So various styles, turns, etc. And I've gone through a lot of those in Affinity Photo. But also if you go over here and again, select the spiral tool, you've got exactly the same set. So you can just change things. You can go for linear, you can go for decaying, you can also go for semicircular, which I think is a really nice one. And also this one, which I think is one of my favorites, counter semicircle. Also Fibonacci and also plotted. And that creates a very unusual one. You'll notice as you change it, lots of the settings will change. There's some things like bias that appear that will not appear with the others. So let's just go back to the first one, linear. And you can modify a number of turns. Now the size of it will be defined by this box. So as you add additional turns, it doesn't increase. It doesn't appear to be a feature to do that. It would be nice, of course, if it did do that. Just keep what you had, expand out. It doesn't seem to offer that option. And you can just change it and you can push it up. Now you can push it up to, you can always go over here and say enter 40. So you can make a really intense spiral. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to change it down to about five so you can see it. Also, you can modify this. So you just go here and you'll notice at this point at zero up there, if you increase that, increases the other end. Doesn't change that, just changes it here, which would be nice if you could actually have the feature where it would change it here as well. Doesn't seem to do that. You can see, just put it down to zero again. Also, you can change the arc angle. So just click here. And as you do that, you'll notice what happens. That will change. And you can push that down, push it down. And as you do that, you'll notice you'll end up with more of these segments. So if you go over here, got the no tool, you could be actually be able to select these. If you convert it to a curve, you need to convert it to a curve beforehand. At the moment you can't modify them, but here, just go here and convert to curves. So just do that. And you can see now what's happened is you've got all these nodes to play with and you can go over any of these nodes and then you can create some really quite unique sort of spiral designs, very unusual shapes with your spiral. You can also modify the inner radius. So just go here, inner radius, and just increase that. So what happens, it crunches it up, makes sort of like a track design. So it just pushes it there and you've got the central part empty. And you can push it obviously all the way back again. Now, if you go to the other ones, oh, before, you can also click here, use cusp. So click there and you will end up with this sort of design. You can modify it and by changing these settings, you'll notice you end up with a variety of different designs as well. So you might want to tweak those to create different designs. At 90, it's a square. And you can still, exactly the same as before, change the number of turns. Also change this setting 
and so on. So you can create a variety of different designs with that. Also, you can go clockwise or anti-clockwise, so you can just change it if you want that way. So you've got that for that one. So linear decaying, which I think is quite good, but I find it a bit harder to control. There is a decay here, which is good, so you can just change that, so just change the decay setting. So it's not so bad. I find it, if it's pushed to about 50, really decays super quick. You get sort of end up really hard to see the actual spiral at the centre. You've also got options here as well. So you've got decay per turn and also you've got decay per arc. So just click that. Minimum radius, because sometimes I've had these sort of tools that create spirals. They end up sort of unfortunately forgetting that you can't see at the centre. So you can just go here, minimum radius, and you can push this out so you don't end up with that crunched in. That's why I said that a lot of these tools have all got different settings. So what's in one is not available in another, which is a pity in many ways. I think there's some features I think that should be in the others as well. So you've got here semicircular, and again, you can do all the various things here, and you can increase that. And you can see the result of the semicircular. Basically, it looks very much like the linear in many ways. <laughs> so, but semicircular, but also you've got this one, counter semicircular, which I think is the nicest one, and probably doesn't work so well when you've got too, too many turns. But you can see the design there, you've got that lovely curve in the center, it joins and it goes all the way out. Again, I think that's just a brilliant feature, really useful. And again, you can modify this and you can see now it does use both ends. Also, you've got now, do this. So you can do exactly this, same. Do exactly, turn it into a square. You can also, of course, modify other settings like this. Again, to do that, so you can push it to get it at that point. Unfortunately, it would be nice if you could actually make it do all the random angles that it did in the previous one. It doesn't seem to be available. Fibonacci, again, you've got turns, but you haven't got the option, which is odd, one to miss out sort of the minimum radius at the centre. I would have thought they would have included that. And you can see the result of that, because it does always get crunched up. I would like it to actually be able to control that. But it doesn't be because, of course, it starts from that centre, as you can see, as you change the number of there and just change it, just results in that. Now, number of turns, four. Let's put 12. That's the max for the Fibonacci. I guess that's the mathematical model for the Fibonacci. And plotted. Now, plotted's a weird one. This one's got a feature that I think should be in some of the others as well, bias. And you can change the bias and you can crunch it up very close to there. So you can go the other way as well, so you can crunch it down. But I think that's quite nice. That would be really nice if you could actually modify the, with the bias on the others. Also, again, you've got inner radius, so you can crunch that up as well. So you can control whether it's really crunched up or not. Again, if you have lots and lots of turns, you know, you get to that. Change that setting, change inner radius. There's literally thousands of them. You can see that. I probably could spend hours going through various combinations of different spirals that you can create with this. It's a really great feature. And there's a basic spiral there. And with this design. Now, you notice one problem. There's no fill. If I set the fill, I just click up here and you can set the fill, you get this problem, which is not ideal, which is not exactly what you probably want. It's fine, but it's not what I want anyway. But what you can do, you can also go here and you can change the width. So let's just change it to that point. In Affinity Photo, you can't do this. If you're in Affinity Photo and you've got Designer, all you need to do is, of course, use the good old file edit in photo or edit in Designer, go back in between the two. So you can expand it if you want that way. But what you need to do, go to Layer and down to Expand Stroke. So Expand Stroke, and now you've got a fill design. So fill design means you can then, of course, go here very quickly and just add a gradient to it or other designs as well. You can fill it with different shapes. So you can use maybe a circle, create a circle like that. And that design, I'm just gonna cut it. But also then what I can do is I can then go with that selected, I can go to edit and paste inside. Of course, it's not in the right position, but you can see the design is now inside that spiral design. So you can create literally thousands and thousands of different designs using that approach. And you can see the design there and you can create multiple copies to build up and create a very unusual looking spiral. And again, you can do exactly the same. You can go over here and now use the node tool. You can manipulate this. So make certain you select 
this, so go to Window and Layers. In Layers, you've got this curve here. And this curve you can modify. So you can go with the Node tool, then you can just drag this out to create a variety. That's unfortunately what happens when you expand. It's expanded it into curves. You've still got these ellipses, of course, you can still manipulate those, but you can still manipulate the various points of your spiral to create some really unique spirals. You can also use the appearance panel, something that again is not in Affinity Photo. So you've got over here, you've got stroke, and you can see you've got add stroke. Now, add fill is not gonna be any use. So just gonna go here, make certain you select it. It's deselected, it will not be there. So add stroke, so I'm just gonna add a stroke. So you've got another stroke, click on that, and that stroke I'm gonna go for, say, red. Now it's obviously 0.2 at the moment, so let's just change that, push it up, and you can see then you can create a nice, which near enough makes it look like a red fill. It's not ideal, it's not, it's a stroke, but it still looks very similar. However, what you can do, you can push that out like that, and of course you can also move these around, so you can reposition it, put it there to get that result. You can also use it, of course, with blending modes as well. There's options here for blending modes to use. If you've got your spiral, you've created your spiral design, what you can also do is you can always go to Layer and down to Expand Stroke. Now you've got this expanded stroke, you can now combine them. So with that, you've got, say, the Move tool there, and I can just hold down the Alter Option key and drag, so I can duplicate it, create another spiral, so that's that one, or you could create, of course, additional spirals, you don't have to just duplicate it. You can then go to the Layer menu, and down to Geometry, and then go to Add. So you can add those spirals together and you can create more complex designs. If you've got a spiral design you want to save for future use, you think this design looks great, I think let's just add it to Assets. So Window and Assets. Now I've got that already here, so just expand that out. With the Assets, with it selected, just go to here, right side, and click and Add from Selection. So all you need to do, just Add from Selection and then that design is added there. You can do that with any various shapes selected and you can just simply then drag it and just add it very quickly back again. Now you can also modify it, you don't have to keep it as it is in the assets. You can always go and change it say to green say. Also then with that selected you can always then go over here and again go up to the top. This menu here, just here, not this one but this one and then add from selection and that's added as well so you've got the green one as well. You can also save it to your symbols. So you can then go over here with it selected and just click create. So it's added as a symbol. Now this symbol is only for this document. So if you go to another document, then that will not be there. But now you've got a symbol, you can then of course modify it. So you can go here and you can add multiple copies, then go to any of the designs, any of the symbols, double click, and then modify the settings. So you think, oh, you know what? I don't want six, I want, say, four or three. And you can see, as you change them, all of them will change. And also, of course, any of the other settings. So if you go for linear, and so on. Create, again, lots of different designs, all that are live. With the spiral selected, you can also go to Layers, and just down here to Effects. So just click there. And with Effects, you can go and add, say, 3D. So just change the radius, and also change maybe the outer shadow, so quickly give it an outer shadow as well. So you've got a lovely design there, which of course also can be saved to your assets or symbols. If you change any of the settings, the effect is still there. Also with the layers panel, you can go down here. It's options here, just click, and you've got mesh, quad mesh, and perspective, so you can just go for mesh, say. And you can just distort it. Distort the design in all kinds of different ways to create really unique, various spiral designs. You'll notice once you've got that, you've got this warp group, the spiral is still there. So if you want to change the spiral, you decide, you know what, that spiral needs to be altered. I want more turns or less turns. Simply just change that, just go there, and you can see that will change. Also, the mesh is still applied. If you create a spiral that you really like and you want to save as a preset, you can go up here with that shape selected and also make certain the spiral tool selected there. Just go up here, just click, and you've got options here you see I've already got one there. You can just go over here and create preset. Now, if the design is exactly the same as any that you've got already, then that create preset will not be available. You can create preset. 
So just give it a name, Spiral 2. Now I created that preset in Affinity Photo. So I didn't create it in this version. So what you can do, if I want to, I can just quickly click there and you can see now it changes it. Or I can always click there and click again back to bring it back again. If you don't want to create it just using this and just dragging like that, just creating, you can also use the control or command key to actually create by clicking the document itself. So hold down the control or command key, depending if you're on a PC or Mac, and just click. And now you can see you've got this option, create spiral. And you can then modify the width, so you don't have to keep it as a square bounding box. What you can do, just click here, so it's not locked. You can turn around and say, oh, you know what? I want a slightly wider spiral design. Or maybe change the height. Maybe squeeze it in like that. Again, you can change the various things, decay, as well as semicircular, etc. And once you're happy with it, you can click OK. You can also use it with some of the tools that come with Affinity Designer. So you just go over here, and this one's the contour tool. So click that. And with the contour tool, you can then add a contour, something like that. You can also change the contour type. So click there, click there, click there. You can see sometimes very subtle changes. You can also use the spiral to create wonderful spiral paths for text. So simply just go over here and I'm using the artistic text tool. And when you hover over this path, you can just click and then you can just add some text. And now you've got spiral design text very quickly. You can also use this feature with another new feature that is Infinity Designer, and that's the Move Tool feature. So just go over here, the Move Tool, and press Return. Now, this feature was in the previous version, but it has some additional features, and really good ones as well. You can see it down the bottom, Insert Mode, as well as Scale. Scale really expands the options for this tool. Now, I'm gonna go through that in another video, but you can go here, click Duplicate, change the number of copies, Change horizontal, and you can see as you do that, you can create multiple copies of your spiral. But you've also got this option for scale, as well as a few other additional new features. Well, I hope you found this tutorial of interest. Any questions, please let me know in the comments below. A like or dislike, always appreciated. Thank you much.